Welcome back to Cohen and Kerr. We're here with Mark Dudenheffer, candidate for Board of Supervisors in the Garrisonville District. Uh, rather than our traditional debate, we're doing a question and answer. And so we have him here today, so we're going to take advantage of that. And so thank you again, Mark. Uh, and Amanda, you get to ask the question. This is Amanda from the Freelance Star. Great. This is a question regarding schools. Over the years, there's been some conflict between the school board and the board of supervisors. What would you do to bring the two boards together? Um, I, I think I've already done that because I have a relationship with every single school board member uh, and every board of supervisors. I think uh, I have the endorsement of every supervisor, and I think if I asked, I would get the endorsement of every school board member. I think it's important that we have relationships. We build relationships that we encourage trust so that when we sit down and talk about these issues, people don't fly off uh, emotionally. Ignore the facts that come out. We need to be very diligent in how we uh, how we deal with the facts. I think we have some problems in the schools that need to be addressed. And, uh, it's important that we that we roll up our sleeves and start looking at solutions and not just arguing back and forth. Um, I think the schools have done a lot to improve that their um, the rapport. They've tried. They have a new financial system. I think which uh, encourages more trust from uh, board members who been skeptical of their accounting principles and things they've done. I think everyone uh, respects the, the new superintendent. We have a new county administrator who, who has a, a great reputation, and I think the team is there. We just need to, we need to have leadership, and we need to build those relationships back. Thinking of education, uh, thinking of education, I know, you, and you had mentioned that you'd served on the state level on the education committee. Uh, can you sort of speak to that? Well, I was surprised when I got appointed to the to the education committee because it obviously wasn't uh, one of my primary strengths or, or experience. But it, you learn a lot when you have to be there and work on those issues. So um, I voted for two pay raises over two budgets um, in the uh, in the house for the state budget. Um, I. I proposed legislation this last year. I had a piece of legislation that almost got out of the house. Uh, it's going to take a few more times, but it required a nurse in every class, in every school. Um, I think in a day when a child can't take a uh, Tylenol without someone supervising them, that we ought to have trained people who are qualified to do that. Um, I passed. Our, I did get a law passed. Um, that was working with the Griffin family called Gwyneth Law, which required every high school graduating senior to have uh, have been exposed to uh, or trained in CPR. So to think about the magnitude of that, every year from now on, we'll graduate 90,000 uh, adults into the system into the into Virginia that have um, CPR training, and every teacher is required to have CPR training. It was a tragic series of events that happened and exposed the problem and we worked diligently to, to fix um, the family that worked with me and the American Heart Association were terrific and the support I learned how to put legislation in and how to work it and how to get it done. So, um, we deal with a lot of issues on the state. We have study groups and commissions that look at things that the public never really really see that they're working. I think a lot of them have a, uh, a concept of, well, they don't care, they don't even know what our problems are, and I would argue that they do know what the problems are, it's just a matter of coming up with a, a solution that can, you know, that can get out with a variety of structure that we have down in Richmond. So um, I enjoyed working. I, in my first term, I was on higher ed. I went and visited a bunch of the universities around the state appreciation for the problems they have. My second year I was on innovation. And I serve on the, um, the pre preschool education, I forget the official name of it, um, but school readiness committee and it looks at zero to five education. So we're, we're working really hard. I, I was when I first heard the term zero to five, I didn't know what to expect. But there are people who, and there's data that shows that we need to be addressing that area uh, more than we're doing it with mothers who have children that don't 
you know, the first thing about being a mother, how to nurture, how to educate, what the developmental stages are. So, and the other one I work on has to do with the future of high school education. And I'm a firm believer that we can't, with technology and the students and the way that they're exposed to different things now, we can't continue to do high school education the way we did it 50 years ago. We need to move forward and find innovative ways. Uh, Virginia has a virtual high school now with over 1,000 students. Um, I think some students would, could excel in an environment like that. I have a master's degree that I got online. So I know that it can be not right for everyone, but there are opportunities out there that would reduce the strain on the classrooms that we have, that would um, provide a tool that you know, some kids can, can excel at. It's not the only solution. I think we have a number of uh, other ideas that they're floating around. There'll be an agenda package put forward in the next legislative session. So, but serving on education with a real learning experience. Uh, growth is one of the biggest issues affecting the county right now. How do you plan to address it? Well, it's a, it's a very complicated issue. It's not something that can be addressed in just a few words. I mean, back to the, to the proper bill that you mentioned earlier and the, um, the limited number of tools that the state feels that they can give to local government. Um, I tried to get the Builders Association to sit down and talk about going away with proper's and coming up with a more equitable, equitable way for developers to, um, you know, to invest in the infrastructure that we need. Unfortunately, everyone holds their cards tight and they're not afraid not usually willing to sit down and talk a great deal about making major changes because they feel they're going to lose ground. So, um, but it's it, growth is um, is a, it's as important an issue in Stafford County as just about any other because it impacts all the others. It impacts transportation. It impacts the capacity of schools. So um, it's really important that we manage growth. Of course, we have a huge by right number of lots that are available. Tom, you're on the Planning Commission. You guys deal with that all the time. So we have, the last I heard, over 25,000 um, by right lots. Uh, and you can't do hardly anything to affect those. So you're going to get that growth. I think we need to be more diligent, though, in what we approve um, outright ourselves. Um, in the last three and a half years, they've approved 1,400 new units from, from various housing um, apartments, townhouses, single family homes. I think that's way too much. I think in the prior six years, we approved 150 total, and that was, those never got built. So I would be a hard bargain, and I could give examples if we had time of things that I've done that um, would, would show that I have a, an asset you want to come to. And we don't have time for that, but we do have time to take a quick break. So come back after this break for our remaining segment with Mark Dudenheffer. <laughs>